Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of English 112 Online. Uh, and this week we'll be discussing uh, the first quarter or so of Dubliners and the article Patterns of Paralysis. We are reading Dubliners this week, this book right here, and we are going to be reading seven stories. Of course, remember, if you don't have the book, it doesn't matter. Uh, they are, there are links posted online at Project Gutenberg. It's totally accessible for free, uh, as you will see on Webstud. The first story that we're reading from Dubliners is The Sisters, which details a, a young boy's relationship with a priest uh, who has recently passed away. It's a story where we don't really know what happened between the young boy and the, tr the priest, but there's definitely something strange about that relationship. Um, and the, the young boy has, as a matter of fact, ironically enough, uh, this feeling that this old man, the old priest, is paralyzed by something and he haunts his dreams. Uh, what that thing that's paralyzing the old man, the, the priest, uh, as you know, as he died, is up for debate. We'll talk about that in the forum. The next story on the list is an encounter. This is a, another strange story. Uh, we have two young boys who skip school and they encounter, uh, hence the title, an older man who's possibly homeless, who doesn't exactly seem normal, at least seems strange. He seems strange, at least. And the way he sort of provides his philosophy on life and love to these boys seems contradictory at best and hypo uh, hypocritical. The next story is probably the most famous of Dubliners. Uh, Araby, you may have read it in high school, uh, if you've taken other English classes that dwell on the short story, you've probably read this story. You may have encountered it. But this is another story about a young boy uh, who sort of learns or discovers the thin line between lust and love, and it's kind of coming to an understanding of what the difference is uh, in his relationship with his uh, next-door neighbor. Evelyn, the next story in the collection, focuses on a young woman and her decision to choose her family or her lover, uh, whether she will stay in Dublin doomed to the life that she uh, has lived so far or take that chance at a new opportunity. After the Race is a, I would say it's probably the weakest story that we'll be reading. Uh, it's definitely one that's difficult to understand and really enjoy. Uh, I'm putting this out there ahead of time. I think what you will learn to appreciate about the story, and it's probably the, the only reason it's worth reading, is sort of the way the story dwells on its theme about class, uh, about being Irish, and how that sort of ostracizes the protagonist of that story. Um, it doesn't really have a lot of dialogue, it's not it's very summary heavy, there's a lot of uh, sort of explanation of what's going on, but not a lot of interaction between characters. It's a very, very elliptical story. Uh, so you may want to read it twice, or look up some things online, just to get a little more information about the story. Two Gallants is an interesting story where uh, the titular uh, gallants, or not gallants at all, but con men, uh, and the one is going on a date with a young woman to steal from her, and the other goes on a uh, sort of little journey uh, through Dublin. And the final story we will be reading is The Boarding House, uh, which involves the affair between a young woman and an older man in his 30s, and sort of how it affects the home, and particularly the uh, young girl's mother. What's interesting about all of these stories is you will notice that, one, as the collection moves on, the characters get older and older, the protagonists. Uh, the central focus of the stories grow, are, in a sense, growing up. Uh, you can sort of think of this collection as, I, I don't want to call it a novel in stories, it really isn't, but it's it's very it's thematically linked the same way a novel usually is, uh, hence why we're reading a large portion of the collection. So there's that unity of sort of progression in age, number one, but also two, all of these stories sort of dwell on the same theme. Here uh, we have this, as the article from JSTOR puts it, paralysis. There's something that's trapping all of these people in Dublin. So Dublin is, to James Joyce at least, a horrible, horrible place, in some ways, not entirely. But 
he sees it as soul deadening because there's certain things, certain external factors that shape those individuals and bind them into the positions and circumstances they have. In stories like The Boarding House or Two Gallants or After the Race, it's a lot about class. You know, being poor and from Dublin is kind of looked down upon, right? You're not as important, not as smart as and wonderful as people who are rich. For what reason, I don't know, right? And I think that's James Joyce's point. Why are we beholden to this idea of class means that you're better than people? But then, of course, we have other stories in the collection uh, that dwell on slightly different forms of paralysis. In the case of Araby, it's this feeling that love is religious in a sense. The same kind of religious love that, you know, we have or, or, or cultures have for religious figures like the Virgin Mary is what is expected of love, right? It's being chaste, it's being, you know, waiting till marriage, all these things. And it's this young boy who is channeling all of that sexual energy because he's sort of as you read it, you will notice that a lot of the descriptions seem slightly sexual as much as they are slightly religious. And it's this confusion between the two, because what are these feelings I'm having? Oh, this must be some kind of spiritual awakening. But by the end of the story, the narrator learns that, no, this is not a spiritual awakening. This is a biological process, and it needs to be fulfilled in some way. And sort of paralleling with that, we have obviously the, the love and lust, uh, but there's also this sort of Irish nationalism theme that comes through the book as well. Uh, we see it particularly in a story like Evelyn and, uh, and partially in, in, in an encounter. We have, you know, an Ireland that's very much based on the family and it's also influenced by religion, by the Catholic Church, and the way the Catholic Church sort of presents what life is supposed to be like and how you are supposed to be as a person, uh, that really puts these people in these positions that they're unhappy with, but they're completely unwilling to change. And each story ends with that moment, that single, what we might call a sudden realization, a visionary moment. Joyce called these moments those sudden realizations, epiphanies, borrowing from the Catholic terminology, it's where we realize what's wrong with our lives. We, in addiction, they call it a moment of clarity. And each character has that moment in each of the stories. And that's sort of the structure and the way they work. They're all building up to this climax of self-discovery. Now, we could debate whether those characters really do make that giant change and escape. Uh, or end up staying the way they are and, and sort of living that life entirely. But they're, they're, their stories end at that moment right as they come to that realization. And it's, it's, it's a coin toss either way that they could go. And we, can do, we could debate in the forums, you know, what choices those characters are making, whether they're going to push forward or not. And why we're reading these seven stories out of Dubliners is so that we can sort of look at the analysis in patterns of paralysis and trying to determine whether that argument is sound or not. Now, personally, I'll sort of give you my feelings uh, overall about it. I think it's a very convincing argument, at least in terms of what it is saying. I think it's very easy to understand it and believe it. I don't know that the article necessarily makes its case that well, but that's something we'll have to discuss in the forums. That's it for this week. I'll catch you next time. Peace.